Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel That Model Railway Guy and welcome to a brand new double O gauge review video. Having focused on TT120 for most of this year, it's been a while since I've done one of these and I've actually had the loco that we're looking at today for quite a while already. As you've probably already guessed, that is the LNER A4 Sir Nigel Gresley and this is actually one of the Hornby double O models that they did for the 10th anniversary of the Great Gathering. Before we jump right in though, I do just want to say a big thank you to D-Rails who are the sponsor for today's video and I'll be talking about them a little bit more later on. But yeah, the original Great Gathering models have been very, very popular. Uh, they were going for some crazy prices online, so Hornby naturally thought, why not bring them back and this time do them in the double O range and that's what this model is. From a personal point of view, I've been wanting a model of Sir Nigel Gresley as preserved for a while now. It's a loco very close to my heart and I've actually got a video of the real life engine coming up very soon which I can't wait to show you. So when Hornby announced these it was a slam dunk for me. Yes it's expensive and we'll get onto that in a moment but for me this is a special engine and it's also a good opportunity to see how this 00 model differs from the normal A4s because there are a few little improvements. Let's take a look at the specs then and as you already know this is the LNER A4 Sir Nigel Gresley in the classic BR Express passenger blue livery. Being a 00 model this does come with some additional features, most notably the die cast metal body on the locomotive. We've also got a 21 pin decoder socket in this loco instead of the usual 8 pin and we get the new pluggable tender connection on this model too. There's also a firebox flicker LED as well, which I'll show you in action a little bit later on. With this being a premium model aimed more at collectors though, it does come at a higher price than normal, which was £320.99 when I bought this. At the retailers it did get discounted to around £288 I believe, but for the most part this is definitely a more expensive model aimed more at the collector side of the hobby rather than more general modellers. With that in mind, it is evident right from the get-go that this is something a bit more special from Hornby as we get the fancy premium packaging for this model. On the outside we've got a nice card sleeve which recreates the look of the old 00 packaging and then within this is a really nice red and gold presentation box. This has a 10th anniversary Great Gathering logo on there so yeah, Hornby have presented this model really nicely. With these being a limited edition too, you do also get a nice little certificate and you can see that mine is number 124 of 510. This is signed by Simon Kohler, uh, like I said I've had this for a while now and these were announced when he was still at the company so presumably he was the one who signed off on them. Enough about the packaging though, we all want to talk about the model itself and first off the weight of this is great. It is just the locomotive that has a die cast body, the tender is plastic as usual. Uh, that doesn't surprise me, generally you want the weight to be over the driving wheel so if the tender was fully metal as well that would just be dead weight you'd be pulling along. It's also important to note at this point though that the standard Hornby A4 which has been in the range quite a while now is already a pretty darn good model so it'll be interesting to see what makes this 00 version stand out. Obviously that metal body is the main thing which some people will really like and others aren't so fussed about. But there are lots of other little things around the model which show Hornby have really thought about this, at least in my opinion. The livery is outstanding as we've come to expect from Hornby. They really know what they're doing with these big LNER engines and even though this is a BR livery, we do get some really nice black and white lining that runs over the streamline casing. Especially around the front where it curves back on itself too, yeah it's really nice and sharp. On the side of the cab we get more of that lining as well as the BR number 6007 and also the builder's plate just below it there too which you may be able to see on the close up is just about legible. We also get the nice warning flashes around the loco too. I'm not sure if these are strictly a preservation thing or if they would have been there in the early BR days too but either way they're a really nice touch and again the printing is great. Then about halfway down the body we've got the little plate for the post-war speed record that Sir Nigel Gresley achieved. This is printed onto the side of the body but we do also get etched versions of this included in a little detail bag which is fantastic. As you can see we also get a great gathering headboard for the loco too and this is a miniature version of the ones they actually had on the locomotives when they were at the NRM back in 2013 and yes they did have that Hornby logo at the top too. It's a really nice touch and I'm very glad they included both of these. 
Like the main body, the tender also has nice lining around the edge, and the early British Railways crest in the centre is represented really well too. It's also worth noting that, at least to the visible eye, there's no discernible difference between the metal loco and the plastic tender, so there's no need to worry about them not matching. It certainly doesn't stand out or look odd. Looking along the underframe, we've got loads of nice detail here. Hornby have done plenty of Pacifics in their time, so you know what you're getting here, and as always, it's pretty great. This particular A4 does also have the cutaway valances too, so we can see all that lovely linkage there around the driving wheels and the cylinders. I have to admit, I really do like this look on the A4s, and I think this is the first double O gauge one that I've had like this. As you would expect, the front of the model captures the look of the A4s really well too. We've got that double chimney up top, and then moving downwards, a metal whistle which is really nice, separately fitted lamp iron, and also a number plate. The shed code is printed below all this with another lamp iron on there as well. And of course we do have metal sprung buffers. Obviously these are fairly standard across most locos these days, but especially on a premium model like this, they definitely had to be there, so it's good that they are. One new feature though which I'm particularly happy to see is that the front detail around the guard irons can actually be removed and replaced with a NEM coupling for tender first running. Hornby do provide a special coupling in the bag, uh, this has the standard NEM plug tail on it, but in addition to the coupling itself there's also a little bit of moulded detail there to replace those guard irons, and this is fantastic to see. I particularly like this because I model a heritage railway where 50% of the time you'd have the A4 hauling tender first. But yeah, it's very much the best of both worlds where you can have all the detail on the front or you can replace it with this tension lock coupling and still have some of the detail. Or because it's a NEM coupling you could replace it for something else entirely like a KD coupling. So yeah, really great to see this from Hornby, it very much does cover all bases and it would be nice to see this maybe on some of the standard A4s in the future too. We've also got nice metal handrails down the side of the body, as well as a steam pipe too, both really nicely painted so that they match the decoration of the rest of the loco very well. Just ahead of the cab roof we've got the two safety valves, and like the whistle up front, these are both metal as well, and yeah, on a model like this, it's pretty much expected. Likewise there's also the vents on the cab roof as well, and like with most Hornby models, these can be posed in any position you like. And before I show you inside the cab, this is a good time to talk about the connection. This Loco does have the new pluggable tender connection which has become more popular recently and Hornby have started to adopt this on its newer models as well. It's not designed for constant use obviously, but it does make handling the Loco a lot easier, especially for example when adding a decoder. And for our purposes today, it makes it a lot easier to see inside the cab, and we've got a really nice amount of detail in here. As you would expect, all the controls have been picked out in the relevant colours, but we also have the stripes on the sight glasses painted there too, which is really nice. And as if that wasn't enough, the gauges do have both dials on there, but amazingly also the numbers around the outside too. I think this is the first model I've personally seen which has that, and yeah, that's really cool to see. You'll notice the open firebox door too, which has the LED behind it, and don't worry, I'll show you that working a little bit later on. We do also get crew figures for the cab as well, which are included inside the detail bag. Again, a nice touch which is really appreciated on a special model like this. The detail bag also includes the extra pipe work, brake rigging and that flanged wheel set which can be added if you've got a nice big layout with wide curves. Or more likely in this case if the model is going to end up in a display case and you want it looking its best. There's some detail on the cab side of the tender too, most of this is just black plastic like the handbrake, but look closely and there is a bit of printing too. We've pretty much covered the side of the tender already, but round the back there are a few more separately fitted handrails and some steps as well. You'll also notice the corridor connection that would have allowed crews to access the cab via the tender, and there's also that nice little porthole window on the side as well, which is really nice to see. So yeah, some great detail overall on this model. Like I said, Hornby have plenty of experience with making big LNER locos, so we kind of knew what to expect with this one. That said, it does feel like this is more of a step up from their usual A4s with that diecast body and the little extra features sprinkled throughout which do make you feel like you're getting something a bit more special. I do suspect a lot of these will end up as either display pieces or even just remaining in their boxes, but I do intend to run mine, so let's see how well it performs. So I now have Sir Nigel Gresley on the rolling road, and it's time to see what this loco can do. 
as the power comes up, you'll see we've got it running at a nice slow speed. It doesn't do an absolute dead crawl, but this is perfectly fine for an express train, which to be honest, you're not really going to be shunting with that often. This is just running on analog at the moment. I'll put a decoder in it when I run it on the loud, but while that doesn't necessarily make a huge difference, I do feel like it's easier to control locos at slower speeds on DCC. More importantly though, you can see this is a really nice smooth runner. At the higher speeds, it really is like a sewing machine, again showing that Hornby know what they're doing when it comes to getting the best performance out of these big Pacifics. Let's face it, they've made enough of them over the years, so they've had plenty of practice, and I'd say the extra weight of the diecast body is also helping there somewhat too. The performance is much the same in reverse, perhaps a tiny bit slower at the lowest speed here, which I have found to be the case with a few other models now, although I don't know why that would be the case. You can hear there's absolutely no motor noise from this model at all though. I've actually boosted the audio slightly, and it's literally just the noise of the wheels turning on the rolling road, which is great. And while I remember, you can just see the firebox LED in action too, even though this is actually a rather enclosed cab. Obviously on analog, this is on whenever the loco is running, but even on digital, there's no way to switch it on or off. That has been the case with a few other Hornby Locos that feature this, such as the 9F and the P2, and it's a bit of a shame, really. It's such a simple thing to do, so I wonder why Hornby haven't built in that functionality when it seems pretty much every other manufacturer has managed it, especially now that they've moved over to the 21-pin decoders as well. It is a fairly minor gripe, though, and not one that's specific to this model, but overall, Sir Nigel Gresley seems like a really nice runner. Like I said, I'll fit this with a decoder off camera and then we'll put it through its paces on Pitley. Before we check out Sir Nigel Gresley on the layout, I do just want to say a big thank you to D-Rails for sponsoring this video. Uh, as I'm sure you guys know by now, D-Rails are an absolutely fantastic model shop and every time I talk to them, it's really obvious that they know their stuff. Uh, to me, D-Rails is a model shop run for modelers by modelers. Uh, they really do care about their customers and I always liken it to having the atmosphere and ethos of your local model shop, but with the convenience of it all being online. Now, at the time of filming, I think all of the great gathering Sir Nigel Gresleys have sold out at D-Rails. Uh, it has been quite a popular one, it seems. But there are some of the other 00 locos available, like uh, Bitten or even the upcoming DP1 Deltic as well. And of course, D-Rails have loads of stuff on their website, derails.co.uk. So even if you're not in the market for an A4 right at the moment, it's still worth heading over there to check out everything they have on stock or also available to pre-order as well. Again, a big thank you to D-Rails for sponsoring this video. And now let's head over to Pitley Steam Railway to see Sir Nigel Gresley in action. <laughs> Thank you. 
as you can see, Sir Nigel Gresley is doing a fantastic job hauling these carriages around the layout. With this being a double O loco, I thought I'd give it a longer train than usual, and yeah, these six Mark 1s are absolutely no issue at all. The running quality is really nice, and the slow speed when coupling onto the train was absolutely fine. Like I said earlier, you won't be using this for shunting all that often, so most likely it will just be for the odd light engine movements here and there. Obviously though, with this being a double O loco, it's a premium model that comes at a premium price. Is this going to be right for everyone? Of course not. This is a special edition aimed mostly at collectors and people like me who want a special model for some reason. For the vast majority of people, a double O loco like this isn't really needed for your layout. A standard Hornby A4 will be perfectly fine. And let's not forget that those standard A4s from Hornby are already really good models that have stood the test of time and have kept many people happy for years. I actually have an A4 from Hornby's main range, so do let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a review of that at some point as well. But yeah, if you do want something a bit special, these Hornby 00 models don't disappoint, and there's also those little upgrades throughout like the firebox or the front couplings. Now it is also worth mentioning that Daypol are about to re-release their Black Label A4 II. Again, that's a premium model and it's even more expensive than the Hornby one, about £100 more I think. But it does come with sound, lights and smoke as well, so definitely a model that's going to stand out. I believe they are exclusively just at Rails of Sheffield at the moment, I'll pop a link to them down in the description if you want to check them out. For me though, I'm really happy with this model of Sir Nigel Gresley. I got this because I have that personal connection to the actual loco, and I was happy to pay a bit more for a special edition as a result. And that makes it worth it in my eyes, and I certainly haven't been disappointed by this 00 model at all, and I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing what Hornby have managed to produce with this. If you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you can become part of our little model railway community. It really does help out and it's very much appreciated. Let me know down in the comments if there's any other locos you'd like me to review in the future. But that's it for today everyone, so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!